Hallelujah. Is our God worthy of all the praise and all the honor? Amen. Can you make one more little shout in the atmosphere tonight? Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God deserves the praise. Amen. Amen. I think today we're about halfway through the year, right? And I'm so good at the match. We're halfway through the year, right? Can anybody say God has been good? Amen. I find this year is an um an overdrive. We see like January was just yesterday. Like the year just brought and terrible. Yeah, the Lord for the slow down in the second half. Amen. I, I find the first half just going. And even like Thursday night we had our Bible study and Zoom. I invite you to join on. If you're not, and we had this question and I feel very much like midterm. You know, midterm is halfway through the semester and you kind of stop and check your grades. And if your grades not so good for the first half, you say, look, I have the next half of the semester to improve. Amen? <laughs> and all you are getting A pluses for the year. But I say, Lord, I'm not sure my grade for the year is so stellar. If I need a zoom in by, but whatever your grade is, you have the other half of the year to end it off well. Amen? So don't get discouraged, don't get disheartened if it's not going the way you had it planned. It's okay. Check your grades. Be honest with the report card. I say, need to come to church more often, need to pray some more, you know, and strengthen up the report card. Anybody with me? I, I work on my report card too. Amen? Put your hands together for the worship team as they let us tonight. Amen? Oh God, He's worthy. He keeps his promises and uh, we can trust him. I think tonight, uh, every time we got it's special, but I feel tonight is a special night in my spirit. I think God has put something in my spirit tonight. So let us pray. Lord, I want to thank you for what you have done so far. You have brought us through. You are a faithful God. You are our champion. And for every need in this house tonight, you know, even unspoken needs, would you speak? Do you alone are God. Do God things in this house tonight. Let your word go forth with clarity. Use me as your servant. Touch the hearts of your people tonight, O oh God. Every, every needy person. Some of we don't often want to admit that we have any needs, but Lord, we need you. We need you. Do something tonight, Lord, in the heart of your people. I praise you for your faithfulness. In none of the name, but the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. All right, so uh, tonight I check in the clock. I want to get you out of here. I have some scriptures I want to cover. I want to get you out of here in a reasonable time. I don't think you'll be here more than four to five hours. <laughs> Lock the doors. Amen. Just joking. <laughs> um, we have been, uh, for the last few weeks, discussing the simple fact that God tests his people. Just as the young people now are right in the midst of CXEs um, being tested, the critical time of testing for them, and we've been praying for y'all, Joshua, we've been praying for y'all, seriously lifting up prayers for y'all, we expect some good results in Jesus' name, amen? If y'all don't do well, it's not because we weren't praying, because y'all didn't study, glory, hallelujah, amen? <laughs> we've really been praying, and I believe some good results. Um, but the children are going through testing. Many of us are going through testing in various areas of our life. But there can really be no promotion without no testing. And I know this topic of testing is not really exciting or bouncy. But um, if we study it well and we apply it, there will be promotion and blessing on the other side. Amen? And um, so this is probably our fourth week now, almost a month now. We're looking at different testings, um, different men of God, different scenarios where God has been testing. And we did it last week. Um, let me get a quick run up recap of last week, and then we jump into this week's message. Um, Turn me to Second Kings chapter 5. That's where we were last week. We're going to kind of continue from there. Second Kings chapter 5. And let me give you the lead up. We looked last week at the testing 
of a military captain, general, five star, big man. And he had so much going for him, but he caught a disease of leprosy. And uh, the Syrian general, this captain, he was tested. Everyone is tested. But he was tested in the area of his health. But as we saw last week, more so, his pride was tested to see if he would come off his high horse and submit to God and the ways of God. In life, I was want to remind you as we looked at last week, there are just some problems that money, wealth, access, nobody can help you but God Almighty. And um, Naaman learned that, that for everything he had, the great armies, the wealth, there are just some things that God alone can do for you. And let's pick up from verse 15. Naaman was tested. His humility was tested. But thank God, he passed the test. In the, in the next couple of weeks, they're going to be, when results, whenever the results come back, they're going to be rejoicing and weeping because the results from the test are going to come back in. And um, thank God, last week we looked at Naaman passing the test. And he picks up from verse 15. And he returned to the man of God, he and all his entourage, his company, and came and stood before Elijah. Elisha. And he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Naaman came back a different man. He publicly confessed his faith in God in, uh, with his peers around him, with his Syrian entourage. He opened up his mouth and he declared that there is no God but Jehovah. And he came back. We know that not everybody gets back, comes back. A lot of people get touched from God like those nine lepers. They get a touch. God touched their life, changed their life. But not everybody comes back. But Naaman came back. And I, I want to encourage you to be that one to go back and say thank you to God. Because God is good to all of us. Has God been good to anybody here today? Let me say, God good to everybody. But it's not everybody good to God. And uh, Naaman walked back <laughs> after hyping up. It's a good story. If you have some time, read it this week. After hyping up, blowing a gasket, he humbled himself and came back with his entourage. Humbled himself, walked the road of gratitude, came back, opened his mouth and declared, there's no God like Jehovah. But he also, he came back with a desire to give back. And um, he said, you know, take a blessing. He didn't just want to take, he wanted to give back. And um, he considered the things in his life that needed to change as well. And he didn't want to offend a holy God. If you want an example of a man that had an encounter with God, it was Naaman. A lot of great things are said as this man had an encounter with God. His leprosy was healed. His, he, he, he came off his high horse and he passed the test. He had a great testimony and his life was transformed. Can anybody say... Ha, can anybody relate to having an encounter with God and your life has never been the same again? Really touched by God. I didn't say you're perfect, but your life has can't be the same again. Amen? Anybody know him and met him? Hello. It, 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 you'll never forget. It, it, it's, not, it's not an easy road, but when you meet him, it's something different. It's not church. It's encounter with him. And... Um, Great story, great testimony. Um, even when this man went back to Assyria over this army, uh, my imagination, I wonder, you know, how God used him because he, he, he was a serious man. He was a serious man when he was the, the general in Assyria. He was a serious man for God when he got the touch. But the story doesn't end there. He passed the test. But I want us to go down just a little bit further in this chapter because it doesn't end right there. 
There's some other testing that takes place in this chapter that I want us to look at tonight. Verse 16. But he said, so verse 15, Naaman says to Elisha, take a blessing of thy servant. I brought silver, I brought gold, I brought garments. I want to give back in light of everything that God has given to me. I want to give back. Verse 16. But he said, Elijah, as the Lord liveth, before, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. What a strange story. A pastor turning down offering. Hello? What a strange scenario. In like the man's heart was pure, he was grateful. He came back and he said, here, take this blessing. I'm sure you have needs. Everybody have needs. And Elisha said, no, I will not receive none. Strange story. And he urged him to take it. He said, please. And he said, no. Um, verse 17. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules, even to take two donkey jack, burdens of earth, for thy servant will henceforth, henceforth offer neither burnt offering nor sacrifice unto any other god but unto the Lord. He said, Take two donkey from me now because I make up my mind. I'm not offering nothing to no other God but true, the true and living God. Um, verse nine, let's, let's go to verse 19. And he said unto him, Elijah said unto Naaman, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. So Naaman's going back, a new man washed off his disease, carrying back all the gifts that were given, that he brought to give to the man of God. Elijah said, no, it's all right. Go ahead, he's going back. And the story takes a very interesting twist here in verse 20. But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has feared Naaman the Syrian in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Now tonight I want to introduce you to Gehazi. Gehazi was the servant of Elisha. But, uh, but more than just a servant, he was, he wasn't an employee of um, Elisha. He was being groomed and mentored to replace Elijah. Just as Elijah had mentored Elisha, Eli as, as life would be, Elisha left, Elisha continued with the mantle. But Gehazi was being mentored by Elisha to continue to flow in the power of and the mantle of a man of God. He was understudying. He was shadowing Elisha. He was poised to take over and flow in the power of God. Go over back to chapter 4 with me. I want to show you just a little thing with Gehazi. Um, very interesting very interesting turn of events. And in, verse, in chapter 4 and verse 27, I'll pick up a little story from here, just show you something with Gehazi. And when he came to the man of God, and when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, Elisha. But Gehazi came near to push her away. And the man of God said, let her alone for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me, and has not told me. Just in passing, this is a great prophet Elijah, hearing from God, but the secret things belong to God, and God don't tell you everything. 
And Elisha, the great man of God, said, God has hid it to me, and he has not told me. The back story for this, I'm sure you know it. She had a son. She was barren. She couldn't have a child. The prophet told her God would open up her womb. She had a child, a miracle baby, and the child died. And she ran down here to um, Elisha to pray because she said, God wouldn't mock me to give me this child and take him. Verse 28. Then she said, did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins, take my staff, my staff in thine hand, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute thee, answer him not. Lay my staff upon the face of the child. Elisha was mentoring Gehazi. He said, take the staff, go down there. The child is dead. I want you to lay my staff upon this child. Speak, declare the name of the living God and watch the child resurrect. Elisha was grooming Gehazi to flow in the power of God. He understood his time here was limited like all of us and he was preparing this younger man, I believe, Gehazi, to flow in the power and the anointing of God. Interestingly, I'm not going any further. I have a few verses I want to cover, but you must read the story. But strangely enough, he went down there. He did what Elisha said, but nothing happened. And Elijah came down and prayed for the child, and God, in his power, resurrected the child. I'm talking about Gehazi today, a uh, man with great potential. Elisha wasn't, was a real man of, of God, the real deal. And he had Gehazi functioning with him. I believe there were so many great traits in Gehazi, so, many, so much potential um, in him. And if he selected this man, it spoke volumes. I am... Um, when we do these like series and different things, I must say, I learn. Like if, if, if nobody learn, I say, God, you know, I'm learning. And one of the things that I'm learning is that potential is not enough. Um, even being a nice person is not enough. Because realistically, the only way that we get promoted is by passing the test that this life throws at us. No matter how nice you are, now you can be nice, nice in the class, always sweeping up, very friendly, good attitude. If you fail a test, you repeat in the form. Hello? And sometimes people in the class may not be the most friendly, they may not be the most jovial, they may not have the best, but when time comes, they do their work and they get promoted. That has been helping me a lot, because sometimes I see good people, but they don't seem to be getting anywhere in life. And the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to me in this study with different tests that God throw our way. He tests us, not because he wants to see us fail. He tests us because he wants to promote us. But nobody can just promote you just so. No system on earth works like that. You must be tested, you must be tried, and once you pass, you get promoted. And um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a kingdom principle. And... Um, I've been in Christianity a little while, and sometimes, you know, it is a lot of blessing, blessing, double, double, everything is double, double, and people talk so much about the blessing, but they don't want to tell you how to get it, you know, and people sing about it, sing about it, sing about it for years, and never walk in it, you know, I don't, I don't want to sing about it, I, I want to walk in it, hello, and the reality is you're not going to walk in it unless you pass the test of God. You know, nobody going to give you a little blight because they know your mommy. And um, let's, let's go back over to verse 5, chapter 5. Very, very simple tonight. But this young man, Gehazi, I think he, we can learn something from him. He had so much going for him. He was rubbing shoulders. He was on the study in Elisha. Rich anointing. He just saw dead rays. He had so much going for him. Um, you know, he wasn't all bad. Verse 20 says, 
he said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman the Syrian in not receiving at his hand that which he brought. You see, he had been understudying, going, living, perhaps even struggling with Elisha. And this blessing, this silver and this gold that Naaman brought with him would have changed their way of life. Their standard of life would be changed. They would, they would go from zero to hero. They would be, everything would change. And um, I want to challenge your thinking as this story has challenged mine. Um, I wonder if Gehazi was critical of the choices of the man of God, his master, his leader. I wonder if Gehazi was critical of the choices, how Elisha was functioning. I thought about this story, and um, Elijah had been functioning kind of weird. If, if, if you think about this story, Elijah um, started off, Naaman came down to see him, big entourage, fancy chariot, gold, silver, wardrobe, and he came down, and Elijah wouldn't even go out his tent to see him. The Bible says he said to his servant, go and tell him, I say, go wash it in. That's what the Bible said, right? So the Bible said, anybody think that's strange behavior? Big dignitary come and see you. Jerry, limousine pull up in front of your yard. Travel all the way from Syria. Big entourage, flags and swords and armor. One would think he would go outside and say, good afternoon, sir. The Bible said, Elisha did not even go outside and look at him. He sent his servant, tell him I see, go go dip seven times, go wash it in, in the river. Anybody say that's strange behavior? It's kind of strange, these men are God, with a strange behavior. So, Eli, so Gehazi would have seen this strange behavior from the man of God. Uh, <clears throat> but at the same time, I think he had just seen God use the man to raise the dead. And at the same time, even in Elijah's strange behavior, leprosy, an incurable disease, had just been healed. So obviously, God was working through him. He was led by God. He obeyed the voice of God. Sometimes God asks you to do strange things. I believe it. Elijah heard the voice of God say, don't go out there. Just send him down there. I may believe that and the story bears it out. All Elijah was doing was following instructions from God. All he was doing, no, just God tell him, don't go outside, send him down there, because Elijah couldn't heal anybody. But he followed the instructions of the Holy Spirit. And um, sometimes when you're led by God and you're obeying the voice of God, it makes you look kind of weird and foolish. Sometimes you, you turn down opportunities that people think you should take to big up yourself. But... Time will prove choices, whether good or bad. But look at the outcome in this story alone. A man's life was transformed. He became a believer. And I believe um, he went back to Syria and did much, many great things for the Lord. Amen? But Gehazi, the servant of Elijah, the man of God said, Behold, my master has speared Naaman this Syrian. I looked at the thought process, even though the Bible says he said it. I don't believe he said it audibly. I believe he was speaking to himself. He murmured in his heart, Behold, my master has speared Naaman. And he was saying the right things. He said the right things. He didn't say, that man, he said, my master. <sighs> I want to say to you, church, we can be in church long enough, say the right things, know the lingo. Pastor, bless you. Hallelujah. You can know the right things to say. But I want to encourage you, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Hello? 
Because very frankly, you look at, he, he didn't say, oh, that man over there, just, you know what he do, he chip out. He didn't take, that, take all that gold from the man. He said, my master, even in his dialogue, I said, Tal, this man, you're a well church boy. Hello? Let me tell you, there is something about being in church a long time. People just know how to function. And now when they disobey, you know, they will still say, hi, pastor. But then I do what they say, right? But they will still say, pastor, bless you. And he said, and then look at the sentence again. He said, my master has spared Naaman this Syrian in not receiving at his hand that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth. Look, I want to tell you about them religious spirits. Even in his disobedience, he have the Lord intermingled in it. Hello? Be careful with them religious demon. Hello? Hallelujah. I want to stop being back. Glory, hallelujah. Hello? I want to try mash up your marriage. Oh, bless the Lord, brother. Hello? I'm just saying that um, Gehazi speak to me as such an interesting character because he still referred to the man of God as my master he's still saying hallelujah as the Lord live he including the Lord even in his sin I will run after him and take somewhat of him Gehazi is a complex character and I'm learning more and more as I live that we as human beings are very, really straightforward. Gehazi, his name means Valley of Vision or Valley of a Visionary. That, to me, I said, oh, okay, his, his, everybody's name have a meaning. Gehazi's name meant Valley of Vision. But I thought to myself, how can you have a great vision in the valley? Because if you're in the valley, it's not much you can really see because you're surrounded by mountains. If you have a vision when you're on top of the mountain, you can see way for miles and miles. You can, you know, you look around on top of the mountain and you can see as far as everything could go. He was going to, a prophet is one that sees and if you're going to be a prophet, you're up on the mountain with God like Moses. God showing you things. But he was a, a valley visionary. He had vision in the valley. And when I saw his name, I looked up in a few different um, commentaries. I said, Tal, what kind of name is that? It seemed as if he had vision in the valley. Um, he couldn't see very far ahead. Kind of short-sighted. And um, it's, a, it's a mystery, this gentleman by the name of Gehazi. He had he didn't have no far vision. He was kind of short-sighted. Anybody ever met, met anybody that kind of short-sighted? Then we had a long-term goals now. They just kind of just, they live just for here and now. Right? Just like a short-sighted. Not thinking about the future next year, next month. They kind of live for the now. One of my challenges that I observe this beautiful nation of Antigua and Barbuda, too much people short-sighted, especially young people. All they want are shoes, a frock, and one ticket for go to one fet. They don't mind living dead in rent. They don't mind if all they want are the latest phone, the latest shoes, they have an aspiration. Nations and people come here, buy up all of our land, they see the beauty here, they, every piece of land they grab, Syrians, Chinese, Lebanese, and guess what? Your, all we want to do is fet and get wet. And a vision. People, people grandfather left land for us and I'll just sell it out for a ticket for go VIP. So I can smile on Instagram and show how many shoes we have. Hello? Plenty gehaze, I trust me. I, I don't know if you see it, but I see it. A generation, all they want to do is fit. They take loan for fit. No, no, I'm serious. They, they go to take a loan for fit. Now, the money, no. And this quick cash and this short term loan, and you, uh, you're just going from one loan to the next for Instagram. Low vision, not long, not suffering a little. 
for a brighter future. Hello? I want to I wanna challenge you. Life doesn't work like that. You have to suffer a little and make some sacrifices to have a good future. Hello? Sometimes you drink water and now I'm like a bread and cheese because you have a vision. You hear me tell you? Yeah, you have to jump on a little, yeah, even like a sardine. Jump on like a bicycle and go down the road because you have a vision. But something was wrong with Gehazi's sight too. He seemed to have a kind of short, short term vision. Something is name in this valley vision, valley visionary. And um, he was being tested. And uh, as I prepared this study, it seems to me I almost kind of swerve off because I started thinking about how many, when it's, it, it, it seems to me that many greats fail when it comes to the test of materialism and covetousness. When it comes to things, I, I even thought, began to sway a little, just a little, think about Judas. And think about Judas sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. How do you sell out the Lord of glory for, in, in eternity for a lunch money? Hello? But you see, all of us sell God short now, for he is priceless. But I thought about Gehazi I hear, all of a sudden, a few robes come. The man come with some wardrobe. The man come with some gold and some silver, some camel and some donkey. And all of a sudden, Gehazi vision starts to get blurred. And um, Gehazi was being tested. There is something about this covetousness that God needs to kill out of us. Because many great men and women of God go far, far. And as soon as they get exposure to certain things, they go off and get destroyed. Some of these men of God that you see, and I, I want to encourage you to read. I, I try to read as much as I can. I read biographies, um, great men and women of God. And some of them start out really good now, really humble. But as the test get hard and they get exposed to wealth and notoriety and fame, some of them go off and crash. Powerful men and women of God, they didn't start off like that. So here was Gehazi's test. And one of the things, like CXC, we get to know, the children get to know, and I did mine, when the test was coming. The strange thing about when God tests you, sometimes you don't see it because it don't come with a banner mark test. It is in the everyday with Abraham and his son and when God rained on the manna, sometimes the tests of God are sneaky. They don't come at a particular time with a big sign. Because if you read this story, you would think that this story was all about Naaman and people getting saved and healing and leprosy. But if you look a little closer, you'll realize that there was something in there that Naaman wasn't the only man being tested. That Gehazi was being tested as well. Verse 21. So Gehazi, Gehazi followed after Naaman. No, I just thought to myself that Naaman got a head start. Naaman was in his chariot, the Bible tells us. So in order for Gehazi to follow after him, he had to run pretty hard. And I have here my notes. Gehazi had to sweat by he had to really, really sweat to catch up to Naaman. The Bible said he followed after Naaman. And in my notes, I just thought, disobedience is hard work. Because you're, you're run down the wrong thing, and even when you are sweat. Hello? Nobody in here know it is to go down the road of disobedience? I'm so glad. I love this church. It's the most holy church in the world. Nobody talk can relate. Anybody know it's like to run down the road of disobedience? You in a sweat? Hello? In a work you? Just like how the Bible said Jonah left and they rode hard when the storm came. I thought about Gehazi. I run no joke. And I sweat. 
And I said, boy, that is what the reward of disobedience look like. You go work. Hello? The Bible says that the way of the transgressor is what? Hard. That's what the Bible says. And I know you have never been known that road, but let me tell you, when you decide to go down the road of disobedience and lead to your own understanding, it's not easy work. You hear me tell you? And I believe Gehazi is sweating and running. He had to have been running to try to catch up to this man's entourage because the man left before him. And the Bible says when Naaman saw him running after him, he lightened down from the chariot to meet him and said, is all well? I'm telling you, um, I want you to pay attention. Very simple story. That as simple as Naaman speaking to a sweaty Gehazi. He said, is all right? Is all well? In this moment, this was a chance for Gehazi to abandon the mission. Hello? In this moment, when he said, is all well? You know, Gehazi could have said, <sighs> just pass to say hi, see you later. You know that? You know that the Bible says with every temptation, God will make a way of escape. You know, at that moment when the man said, everything is well, I wonder if the Holy Spirit didn't hit Gehazi in his heart. And he had a choice there to say, abandon the mission. Hello? But, anyway, um, he could have said, hey, I'll just do a little morning exercise, you know? I normally run this way. I didn't even know you were on the road. Hello? He could have abandoned the mission, and God gave him away. He says, everything well. Look at his response in verse 22. And he said, all is well. <laughs> My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from Mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, three talents of silver and two wardrobe, two changes of garment. Hmm? Oh, give them... I pray give them a talent of silver. Thank you. That's why I married you. I pray thee give thee a talent of silver and two changes of garment. Let me tell you, when you start going go the road of disobedience, right? I thought to myself, look at this prophet, this man of God, just about to take the mantle. Chapter before, just, rain, just praying to raise the dead. And look how quick, in one, just the next chapter, he tells tell straight face lie. He turned actor overnight. Hello? As simple as it is, you know how much I wonder if some of these people um, when they perform these acts, if they, they get a Grammy or an Oscar, Oscars. Because think about this. Think about this. How he come up with this story? Man says, oh, all is well. He said, yeah man. Um, Elijah sent me. And guess what? Um, they was come down from Mount Ephraim, poor Mount Ephraim. They was come down to, um, from Mount Ephraim, two young men. And you know, they're the sons of the prophet. Give them, I pray, a talent of silver and two change of garment. In just this one sentence, you know how much lie you tell? You tell lie from Mount Ephraim, you tell lie from the sons of the prophet, you tell lie from Elijah. I want to challenge you. And I, and, I, and I will forever be candid in the house of the Lord. It's just amazing sometimes how much acting takes place in church. Hello? How much pretending takes place in church? I have a Christian Oscars for Christian liars that put on good show in church. Hallelujah! Lie. Messed up but know how to say it and what to say it. And, um, hey, look, how you lie so be a face now? You're a prophet. 
call chosen, leprosy cleanse, dead rays. This, this is the life you are functioning. You are about to step into the mantle and form piece of clothes. And like a status and like a silver. You sell out your inheritance. But when you think about it, as people of God, we have mansions that God promised us, streets of gold, and we sell out our inheritance for a little pleasure. Hello? I, say, I want to get saved, but pastor, I me, me, me like hot clothes, my life put on, my life is just sexy. I say, so you go hell for sexy? No, no, don't no, no, say it like that. If I get saved, I can't wear my short clothes. So you, you give up heaven for my short clothes. And let me tell you about life now. No matter how Coca-Cola buckle you've been, I keep living because sometimes the Coca-Cola buckle turns turn chubby. Have two picnics, something you don't want anyway. Hello. No, some young lady keep fighting and I and I discourage you, you keep fighting, but um <laughs> I am perplexed with Gehazi. Um how he could just lie so bare and put on this performance. I thought to myself, even if in his mind he thought Elijah did the wrong thing in not taking the reward. How could you justify bare faith lying? You understand? So even if he thought Elijah is always dip on some strippiness, I believe God sent this as an opportunity for us to, to do better. How do you justify that by you now? Sinning, telling lie, lie from Ephraim, lie from prophet, lie, 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 down the road. How do you justify that? It's amazing to me, and I don't know if I'm all in church long enough. Pastor, get, let me tell you from me, get blamed for everything. I even know a pastor, I, I, I even recently tell somebody the story. This guy in church impregnated this girl in church, told him, funny kid, she get pregnant. Pastor said, disappointed in you, man, I can't believe. He said, it's your fault. He said, me? He said, yes. I was trying to get to see you this week, and I, and I couldn't, I, you were busy this week, that week. So I just fell into sin. I said, what a joke you tell. <laughs> Everything that go on a foreign, a pastor get the brain. That double it, right? It's not easy. I'm telling you, and until you've been here, see, because I don't understand, even if Elisha didn't do the right thing, how would that justify you a good dung in a blatant sin? Because as far as I know, the commandment says, thou shalt not lie. He on Elijah, he misrepresent Elijah, Mount Ephraim, the two prophets. You know, lie just telling in one sentence. How you justify that? Hmm? And, um, but there's one thing about sin, and I'll be honest. Sin, because I've been there, you always find some way to justify your actions. Hello? We will always find a way to just to excuse what we do. And I, I would love to get into the mind of Gehazi. It's kind of a mystery to me how we justify these actions. But sin don't make no sense. And um, he asked, let's go verse 23. It's amazing and, and deeply saddening to me what some people sell their soul for. Verse 23. And Naaman said, Be content. Remember, he asked for one, right? The man said, Man, take two. Take two, man. It's two prophets, two young prophets come. Just take two. And the Bible says, and this is the way the acting does sometimes bother me. It seems as if he said, No, 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 no. Just give me one. Because the Bible says he urged him and bound the two talents. You understand? He asked for one, the man said, take two. And the Bible says, and he urged, come the man, he said, no, no, one is good. He said, no man, oh no, I'm, no, 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 no. no. And, and he urged him, and I said, God help us with this theatrics in the church. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver into two bags and two change of garment and laid unto two of his servants, and they bear them before him. Big man, no, no. He had two servants in front of him, carrying the silver, carrying the, uh, the hanger with the two change of clothes, 
And the boss, he could sweaty. The king said, you yeah, sweaty man, I'll let my guys walk back with you. Hmm? And can you imagine um, how Gehazi look walking back down the road of disobedience? I think he looked pretty good. If you were to pass and to see Gehazi, you see two well-dressed big servants from Syria walking, clothes and silver in front of them, two of them walking, and Gehazi walking behind them. Boss look good now. Morning, morning. How you doing? Pass through the village, everybody say, yo, say, boy, my boy carry real weight, you know. You know? And it was just picture in your mind, all them going down, two big uh, Syrian men in front, and, and little Gehazi behind the sweater say, Hi, morning, Miriam. Say, What? You step up in your life. Hello? And I'll be honest with you, when you walk down the road of rebellion, because that's the road he went down, there is a period where you look good. Can I tell you the truth? There's a period. When you step out upon rebellion road, where it look like it's working for you. Hello? The prodigal son step out in his father, got the money, down their party, you buy rounds, you buy ounce, you roll, all the woman wrong, he thinks of, for that little time, he look good, come on. And for a moment walking back down the road of rebellion, he look real good. He look as if he knew what he was doing. It, 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 somebody might even say, oh, wow. Oh, boy, things are gone. A long time he needs for left and wrong. Yeah, um, Elijah. You see, things look good for him now. Hmm? Hello. You see, you are not saying anything because you all know how the story ends. But in this moment, in this moment of time, nobody knew how the story was going to end. In this moment, rebellion looked good. Hello? Try to shake his head. When you live long enough, you step out from God and you go on down your own road and everything look good for a moment. And, you, and if you save long enough, you will see them on Facebook and flossing and you see them in, and everything look good. They, were, they weren't driving in church. Now they have big car go down Market Street and it look good for a time. And I think sometimes that's what mess with young Christians too because people in church struggling, they step out in the world, Jaira, they in a church and they're playing that and they're also in a guy in the world and they look good, you see them on Facebook, you see them on Twitter, you see them on mention, you say, what? Me need for the play for Claudia too. It look good for a moment. And in this moment, it looked real good. But guess what? The story wasn't over yet. Hello? Remember, we're talking about long-term vision, right? Short-term vision, it look good now. Hello? Boy, where she get a good man from? When she church, she had a man. And boy, a long time, look at popular man she get. Read the next verse. Hello? The wages of sin is death. Nobody can left God for nothing better. Can no good can come out of disobeying God. You hear me? And when, them, when your black hair starts to turn grey like mine, you observe some things. People step out, disobey, and it look like things are going on for them. But just keep reading. Keep living. So guess what? And um, verse 24. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hands and put them in the house. And he let the men go, and they departed. This part, he says, he came to the tower, right? Let me, well, I'll read it to you from the International Standard Version. He says, when he arrived at the stronghold, and I went back and looked up that word tower, because that, that, that means dignity, zoom in. He said, when he arrived at the stronghold, when he got, there was a stronghold there in Gehazi, you know. And he brought these things to the stronghold. Gehazi took the bag from their custody and hid them away 
in the house. Then he sent the men away and they left. First there was lying and now there is hiding. Hello? You know why they call it backsliding? Because it's dung, dung, dung you're going now. How low can you go? Come on, aren't it true? First he lying and now he hiding. But there's a stronghold. And I want to encourage you, church, that when we look at situations and we can quickly jump on Gehazi, but let me tell you, it's some stronghold that people have on their life that had them born. Some real strongholds. Some of them are generational. That people just go in cycles. That, 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 and I thank God for the power of Jesus because the anointing shatters the yokes. No matter how a family stronghold. And if I can even talk about it, he was hiding. And all of a sudden now he had a secret. And I wonder how many people in church functioning with secrets. Things that they're hiding away. You know, still coming, still functioning. But some things that they have done that they have in hiding. And they come in, but they're walking with a secret. I want to tell you, secrets heavy now. Burdens, yokes, bondage, and stronghold. That's what secrets become in your life. Let me tell you, it's so good to live good. The Bible can say amen. amen. It's so good when your life is an open book. You don't have a secret. You can leave your phone anyway. Everybody knows from password in here. One phone, my hub. And you can barely even keep on charge. So I mean, I get two. One phone. No secret. My children know it. My wife know it. My staff. Everybody know it. It's so good. 2024, it's beep, 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 beep. Yeah, you scan fingerprint. Everything before the phone can open. Why you hide? So we work for CIA. Why you have hidden away? Hello? I mean, I have to jump when my wife come in the room. Come on, phone just right there. Open. Hello? It's so good to live clean. You never worry about nothing, scandal, boss, phone, because you're not. You're in a day, so your name can't call. Hello? Anybody don't know how, how nice it is to walk clean? Y'all not walking clean? Come pass your phone. Send your phone forward. I can't do some <coughs> phone searching. Hmm? Y'all, let me see the, the meme on Facebook where the man on the bicycle turns so he foot on the corner and the meme say, when he realized he left his phone unlocked at home and he see the bars are turned the corner go, but hello? Too much secrets though in the house. Too many, it's too much secrets and too much hiding and too much lies in the house. I think life is already tough. Life is tough, but the, 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 the cover up and the lying and the pretending, even is it worth it? Yes, you have gold, you have silver, you have garment, but you can't, he couldn't even put on the garment. He have it now, but he couldn't even put it on and walk down the road. He don't want anybody know. You're in a relationship, you can't even bring it out in the open. You have to hide it. Hello? Now let me tell you, boy, ladies, let me tell you about man, see? Why, why am I can't tell nobody we're dating? Just come in the water and buy you no business. In and out your house. Hello? We have to keep it a secret. Status, it's complicated. Hello? It's a joke. So here it is now that the, the garments hide, the money pile up, you just get a taste of a fame like walking down the road with bodyguards and entourage and big sword. But now he living and functioning with some secrets and some things covered up in his life. I, I even thought about in my imagination he served Elisha. I'm watching the time. I want to get you out of here. He, he served Elisha. These men served Naaman. There were three servants walking down the road. I wonder if they had a conversation. And I wonder, even when they were walking and talking, if he was telling them about the true living God. What did they talk about? These servants just saw a man with leprosy restored in front of them. 
Now, here is a servant of the living God. I wonder if they come, but hey, tell us more about your God. Tell us about who you serve. And in his religious spirit, he's talking about Jehovah. I can't prove it, but I'm wondering if, what a conversation be. You just see one miracle take place. You tell me the man don't want to know more about this living God. And you who's supposed to be a servant of God, you know things of God, you can hold on good conversation about things of God, all the while you're walking in disobedience and rebellion. Let me tell you, sin is extremely deceptive. Hello? Have a big conversation about things of God. Big, big conversation. And you know you're not live right. And, um... And they departed. Let, let's go. Finally, he have it. He have what he wanted. Um, it's working out for me. All things are working in my good. Muhammad, my, I finally have it. I have what I wanted. Gehazi, you see? You see it wrong? Look, it's the will of God. I have anything you have to hide can't be the will of God. Hello? Anybody light a candle and put them on a bush? And a forest fire you can start? Anything that you can be transparent and open about. That's why you, me can't join nothing that you tell me. Me have a function in a secret. Hello? Secret meeting, secret. The Bible says for me, like, supposed to be, um, I am the light of the Hello? You are the light. Anybody light a candle and put them on a bush and a forest fire you can start? Hello? Careful with the secret business, okay? It's going to be our little secret. You all know that there's no secret. The word secret don't um, exist in heaven. Because everything open before God. So you start to make secret. Remember that that word don't exist in God. And um, he, he departed. They, they departed. He hid wherever he had to hid. Verse 25. But he went in and stood before his master. Say, oh boy. And boy, say, Oscar nomination. He stood up before his master. And Elijah said unto him, Where you come from? Gehazi. Where you come from? Hey, what going on? Where you come from? Let me tell you, church. I'm so serious tonight. There's such a heaviness in my spirit because we miss opportunities that God sent our way. You hear me? He gets a first chance to repent. All is well? Yeah, man. All is well. Pretend. Elijah asked him, hey, where you went? Where you went? And what he said? And he said, Thy ser not just, I'm your servant. Thy servant. Master, thy servant went nowhere. Hello? When Adam sinned, Adam, where are you? You believe God didn't know where Adam was? What was God looking for? The truth. Thank you, young man. Did the young man say? The truth. God was looking for the truth. God is rich in mercy and gracious. And I wonder what would happen if Adam say, My sin, oh God, my sin, my sin. It don't happen. God is not a God that didn't know where Adam was. But if you understand how God works, He merciful. He gave, he gave Gehazi a chance to come clean. Hey, where you went? Some, sometimes it's not that you don't know, no. As a man of God, you know, no. But you give people room to repent. Where you went? Here. Practice make perfect. He lie in front of Naaman and now he lie in front. Hello? 
Tell my children all the time. Kitten grow up for be cat. Puppy grow up for be dog. If you practice for tell lie, you end up and grow up and become a criminal. Because everything, nothing stay the same. Whatever you practice, practice make perfect. You hear me? Tell them, say, if you practice deception now, you, you go master it and you end up lock up. You hear me? Because nothing stay little. Everything grow. And you're growing boldness too. Just a lie to name on the Syrian and now you come back and stand up right. Look, yai ball to yai ball. In the prophet's face and tell he, me not go no way. Hmm? How you stand before a prophet like that? A man of God. You joke that God, you was raised dead. You see God, you was this man with leprosy. Countless miracles. Two tiny miracles that Elijah did. God used Elijah for. Double portion of 19. And you still look the man right in the eyeball and lie. I mean, I'm going away. Okay, here's I buy. We have vision gone. And um, he got a second chance to repent. Verse 26. I'm sending you home. Verse 26. And Elijah said unto him, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? He said unto him, Went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet you? You know, I'm prophet he was dealing with. You know, God see everything. Yeah. I wonder to myself, I, I like a tone because I wonder when the prophet who sees things confront him. I never believe he back down. If he's still right in the eye. Hello? Because he and prophet too. You and Christian, make Christian too. Hmm? Elisha said to him, when the man turned around for the chariot to meet you. But let me say something here too. Um... Let me read you from the International Standard Version, the ISV Version. Because this can hit me too. He said, went not mine heart with thee. I looked up in a different translation. I wanted to see what that means. What do you mean your heart went with him? Here, the ISV, and I, I'll get some other versions so I can put these up when I pull a different version. The ISV says, but Elijah responded, didn't my heart break? as the man was turning from his chariot to greet you. Elisha say, boy, my heart broke. Come here, see her. And God show me everything that happened. And I watch you. A man may raise up for take after me. And my heart broke. There's a heartbreak. When you're in leadership, you see people with potential coming up. And you can't control them. Because the same how he saw him walking down the road, he led you could have run down the road now and stop him and say, hey, turn around. But God don't manipulate people. When Eve had the food for to bite, God could have shown say, hey. When the prodigal son was walking down, the son could have said, hey. God give us a gift called free will. God test us and put the tree in the middle of the garden to see if we will obey. We want people to run behind us. If, it, if, if it's so spiritual, pastor, you should have been telling me something. You should have stopped me. Am I greater than God? I tell you all the time, we are not no cult here. The door swing in and the door swing out. And my desire is to control nobody. You hear me? Control them. Manipulate them. Do, make them do what you want them to do. Elijah knew what was transpiring. And he watched with heartbreak. People with potential and promise and future. But I said to you last week, during the test, if the teacher gets involved, is cheating. You hear me? 
if the teacher come in during the test is not cheating because you have to face that test for yourself it's not true God was test I believe this was the last test maybe there would have been a book in the Bible called Gehazi I asked the Lord when I see him this man was poised to take over ministry Elijah double a portion for Elisha maybe a triple portion for Gehazi because that's the trend that was going and God said I got to test him to see if he can be bought I got to test him to see if he can submit but watch this what I learned chapter oh. I know you have been reading your Bible the whole week so I don't want to give you all too much Bible <laughs> He says, went not my heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee. Is it a time to receive money, to receive garments, and olive yards, and vineyards, and sheep, and oxen, and men servant, and maid servant? You see, um, right here, because as I'm trying to figure out this complex person named Gehazi, trying to see what was in his heart, what was the stronghold that caused him to. T- I want to say to you, church, that sometimes people do things, and the thing is not the stronghold. Sometimes a person can be promiscuous but the problem is not the whore the problem is struggling with rejection or abuse or some stronghold here but it manifests in this way you hear me I look at the actions of Gehazi grabbing silver and grabbing garment and I, I saying God show me the stronghold What's, what is, it has been more than things what is the stronghold in Gehazi's life and the answer is right here he says hear the question the thing that kill kings hear Gehazi hear Elisha ask Gehazi is it a time you see there is a testing call time can you trust the timing of God Listen careful. He said, he, he didn't say, it's wrong to receive money, no. He said, is it the time to receive money? It wasn't no issue with the money, no. You don't see that there? He didn't rebuke him for taking the money, no. He said, is it time? Is it time? You know, you can get, you can get a good thing at the wrong time. It is a good thing at the wrong time and it destroy you. Hello? And that's why you tell people your timing is critical. Force ripe. The aki, nice like a fruit, three tastes like an egg. Vegetable. Every aki a fruit or vegetable, when they show But you see the aki, nutritious Jamaican national dish. If you force open the aki and eat it, you're dead from poison. You all know that? I just saved somebody's life because somebody go, go, go pick one tomorrow and eat it. If you bust open the aki and eat it, you will die or get seriously sick because it's poisonous. If you don't allow it to open on its own naturally, that which is nutritious and life-giving is poisonous. When you go after something before your time, and that's why Paul said to Timothy, when somebody wants to be a leader, here are the criteria. He say, not a novice. That's in your Bible? Right? What a prodigal son got, it wasn't his goods. He said those things which belong to him. But what the problem was, he got them before the time. You see, it's so simple now. There's a sin when you go after the things that God said they're here for you, but you can't wait upon God. That you go after them and you want them. J.G. Wentworth. 777 want my cash. No. And Gehazi wanted his cash. No. There, there, there is an impatience in the heart 
even with, with, of potential that you can step out before the time. Go pan, go out, and the front of the battlefield you're not prepared for, and you'll destroy yourself. I, I just finally, because when I read that a light bulb came off, I say, aha. Is it a time? God taking too long. When you see people go, they do all kinds of trippiness. You know what happened? They tell themselves, God taking too long. Look how long me, me church and, and, and me and Hannah man. So you go there, some uncircumcised Philistine out there. Right? And, and a hide in a farm fool. You hear me? Why? You can't wait. Look how long me church and me and Hannah man yet. You are so quiet in the house of God. This simple little thing of impatience. God has taken too long. Pastor, you know what you say. This is an opportunity here sent by the Lord. God sent this man to me. We say, but the man is saved. Well, the Lord spoke to me. God broke for healer for talk to you. Hmm? And even worse, I had tried to save them. I become the Holy Spirit. They say, Pastor, this girl, I love her so much, but she's saved. She's spiritual. Hello? A broken hearted Elijah. Look upon a man that he loved, lived with, did life together, pour his heart, preparing him for ministry. A broken hearted man of God, knowing. That he can do so much and no more. He say, is it a time to receive money and receive garment and olive yards and vineyards? Because he, Elisha, knew it wasn't the time for that. If it was a time, God would have given him release to take those things from Naaman. But God was testing. Let me tell you, as simple as I wrap up this afternoon, some of us failing the test big time. Because we're just too impatient. We won't listen to nobody. I hear from God too. I wonder how gays I justify his actions. How, how? But how we justify our actions when we want what we want. Even if we come up against the word of God. Even when the man of God warns us, we still run in there. Because God speaks to me too. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 27. Let's see how the movie ends. Prophets. The leprosy thereof of Naaman shall cleave unto you and unto thy seed. For how long? For how long? How long? Forever, ever? How long? Let me tell you, as I end this message, there were some junctions, there were some times where our actions will come with irreversible consequence. You want me to say it again? There are moments in time that, that the grace, the long suffering of God come to an end. Is it well? All is well. Where you went? Uh, I didn't go nowhere. God give you opportunity after opportunity. I want to God just showed him in the chapter before. If he had doubt that the man was a man of God, one dead youth man raised up. One leprous skin just getting clean. I wonder if God was trying to show his I, I am with your master. Trust him when he speaks to you. But whatever voice was speaking in his ear, the same voice that speaks to Judas, Jesus you know where he did on. That voice of rebellion, I tell you all the time, the problem is plenty of people more spiritual than me. I said, Jai, the problem is that they're more spiritual than me. That's the reality. I say something, but they're more spiritual than me. But I don't base my life on no spirituality. I base my life on listening to the voice of God. They're so, spirit, they're, they're so spiritual that they can disobey divine protocols from heaven because they, they have potential. Gehazi had great potential. Great. 
There's no way he could have been in this position if he was not a fly by Judas too. Judas had such good potential, right? That when Jesus said, one year ago betray me, every man starts examining himself because Judas wasn't a bad man. You know, in church, you look and say, oh, he never is spiritual. He, so if, if, if anybody go back there, it could be he at this one year. But when Jesus said, one year ago betray me, nobody, everybody at the table didn't look upon Judas, no. Because Judas didn't have no signs of betraying Jesus. You hear me tell you? He wasn't so, so obvious. Church, this thing is so serious to me. Because when God gives us room, and God gives us grace, and God gives us time, instead of, instead of us appreciating the mercy of God and falling on God, I'll take it for sin some more. One time I was in Hamas prison, I was preaching up there, and I said, if you're stealing and you're not getting caught, what should you do? Man, put up your hand high. I said, what's the answer? He said, keep teething. I said, pardon, that wasn't really the answer I was looking for, but I tell you, you're the most honest man I ever meet. Because most people, until they get caught, they don't stop. They don't stop. But Gehazi get stopped. The leprosy that was on Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. There's going to be a mark on your life. And the sad thing for me to see church is this. Not only you, your seed forever. The consequences for our action that not only affect us, but affect our children forever. When I, somebody told me, that's not fear. That's not fear, Pastor. How, how, how the things that um, my family do fall back on me. I say, we're not talking about fear, no, we're talking about facts. When a mother pregnant, and she snort cocaine, drink rum, or do anything with her body, and the child not born with that, I say, saying it's fear, but it's facts. Hello? Is that true? And in a swing two way, the same way you have generational cursing and generational blessing. That if I live good, our children just walk in favor. Everywhere I go, door open, scholarship, this, that, all kind of things. Why? Because your mama live good. But when people live bad, you know, God said, those that disobey, um, the sins of the father shall pass on to the third and the fourth. You know how much it be for those who walk right? How much? Y'all help me now, y'all Bible scholars, how much? The Bible say up to a thousand generations, those that love and fear me. Three, three to four. And we know it well. The third and the fourth generation, the Bible say up to a thousand generations for those who love me. You hear me? The choice is ours. The consequences are dear. The... the for everything that Naaman, he was around the right people, he was going to the right church, the presence of God was there, miracles were taking place. God testing him to see if he would submit, to see if he could wait on God. And he said, not me. Not me. I want it. No. And he got it. God allowed him to get it. And let me tell you now, you can get any it you want, because God not going to stop you. But as my pastor deceased used to say, he says, you can choose your sin, but you cannot choose the consequence of your sin. Let me say it one more time. You can go to the choose to do it. You can let for you and go whole house. All the time. The class eight, you know, you know, it open. But you can let for you. God won't stop you. You can choose your sin, but you don't get to choose how you end up. One disease, one robbery, what, whatever it be, you can't choose how you end up. Hello? So when you're choosing your sin, understand you can choose it, but God don't give you the right to choose the penalty. Just know your sin will find you out, and the wages of sin is dead. I was telling David about uh, American football star made headlines. He told me, you know the story. Big in America, Javier. Big married man, one of the big black guys, rich and famous. 
meet some Spanish lady, young, long, pretty lady, light as she, but you want lefty wife and all, had a girl all a Puerto Rico up and jump and jet ski and just a carry the girl along like a fool. Or you get lefty wife, you get lefty wife. And David said, you know the story, I saw it in the news. When the girl had enough, she came over to his house, he was sleeping in the chair. He let go about, shot, shot, shot him about four times in his head and then shot herself. You know why? You get to choose your sin, but you can't choose the consequence of your sin. Hmm? When, when Samson chose Delilah, he got to choose his sin now. And when a man then take the hot iron and burn out his eyeballs, no anesthesia, pluck out his eyes from his head, he didn't get to choose that. God is no respecter of person. I feel like if God sent me here today, just stand, I finish, stand, stand, stand. Elijah Gehazi taught about living the life in luxury, wearing the best clothes. And the funny thing in this story, I thought about the fact Elijah did, never took back the things from him now. So he still had the garments, he still had the gold, but now he had leprosy. So concerned about his image, but now he would walk through everywhere, leprous. And the clothes couldn't cover up his shame. You would get what you want now. You would get the man now. I told Joy about a young lady I know over 20 years ago, 20 something years ago, father is a pastor, never too interested in the things of God, get involved with this man, man knocks you about, man has car up and down with woman in the, everybody I know was laughing at her. I spoke to her years after, she said, Matthew, I had a nervous breakdown, this man bring me to the brink of nervous breakdown. And about two weeks ago, it's over, it's over, hold on, it's over 20 years ago, Javier, and just recently, about a week ago, I see she in a car again. I go and go tell Jai, I see she get what she want. At what cost? Man not put a ring on her finger up to now. Man still a run on and take a little. And she like, huh? Nobody left God for better. You hear me? This thing where God is not no joke. God is no respecter. You can be the protege to Elisha. God don't have no PR problem. Oh, how, how is going to look? You think God can we look? God wants to prepare you to step in a position of integrity and patience. And how would he, how would Gehazi continue ministry when he have young prophets and he? What, what would he tell them? Submit. What would he tell them? Obey. Why you gonna tell your children? Obey. And you know obey. He park. Here is it. I believe very much that God gave me this message for two groups of people. One who is about to do something that is wrong. One who is on the brink, who is going down the road of rebellion, but you're not quite there yet. But is already the hook already in you? You're already seeing yourself in the clothes, you're already seeing the ring on your finger, you're already seeing everything play out glamorously, I can say it and show it to you. But God sent me here this Sunday evening to tell you, it's not going to work out how you think. It is not going to work out how you think. How many people left their marriage, left them this, left, and they always have this great something say it and show you how you work out so better out there. And he always ends up disastrous. Not sometimes, no. Always. You know who you are. I know that you, you, you know the temptation. Let me leave it right there. And the other is a person that is already marked with leprosy. I believe there are moments when God looked down from heaven where you went. 
all is well. And you, you, you cross a line and the judgment of God fall. Here quickly are the, the effects of leprosy. It damaged the nerve, the respiratory tract, the skin, and the eyes. The, ner the nervous damage may result in the ability, the lack of ability to feel pain. What are you saying, Pastor? You can cross a line, you can get leprosy. God warn you enough, you step over the line, leprosy destroys your nerves after a while, you don't have a feeling. You can be in church and the sermon will talk about you, bullseye on your head, and you don't feel nothing. Why? You have leprosy. Your nerves damaged. Your heart cold. Even if God were to preach and call your name, you wouldn't feel it. And you can't see because leprosy affects your eyes too. You're in sin. The Bible calls it sin, but you can do it without conviction, fornication, adultery, masturbation, everything you can do. And you still say, I don't feel no conviction. Be careful you have not crossed the line of an uncontracted leprosy where you just can't feel no more. Sit down in the anointing, sometimes in services, tick. You can feel God. You know God talking, and you just not feel nothing. Pastor, I'm 90 now. I can't last me feel nothing. Feel the fear will harden your heart. Harden your heart. Harden your heart. After a while, you have a feeling. No matter who comes, TDJX, no matter who flies, no matter where you go, your heart just becomes so hard. You could see dead rays, you still not repent. Prophetic word come, and you just. Tip, 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 gone home, go trying to close in the mirror. Eee! But tonight, two group of people. One that the devil has fooled you. You're going down a road, you're fantasizing about something. It looks real pretty, but God sent me to warn you tonight. It's not going to be as glamorous as you think. And two, there's grace of God. The, the, I thank God for the blood of Jesus, that Jesus came and healed the lepers. You know how much lepers Jesus healed? That even if you step across a line and God give you a chance for repent, and you say no, you cross the next line, no, God say, all right, leprosy, I'm withdrawing from you. Jesus came and healed the leper. But there are moments and time it's not going to be an open check forever. I feel very much in my spirit like tonight is a marking moment. That God is looking to see how you respond. I believe when Elijah said to Gehazi, where you went? I think that was a critical time. Heaven and God watching to see if he did break down. And he say, nowhere. If that word is for anybody, I believe heaven watching tonight. Because more than me talking, the Holy Spirit hitting somebody's heart. Right now, you feel a conviction. And God is looking for a response. Let's bow our heads. Lord, I thank you tonight for your word. I, I thank you tonight for your love. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Lord, you could have strike down the haze I like dead. Lord, you could have strike me down dead when I do strippiness. But you're a God of love, grace, and mercy. You give chances. But Lord, it is long your spirit won't always strive with men. So tonight, O oh God, as your servant, I delivered your word to your people. Lord, I pray against the pretense in this house tonight. The pretending, the Oscar awards. Don't feel nothing, no joy. Long time didn't feel the presence of God, but coming to church and going through the motion. Trying on the clothes of disobedience. Lying bare face to themselves and Lord to you, justifying their sin. But Lord, tonight I pray, unlike a haze, either somebody will be honest first with yourself. Would you be honest with yourself tonight? 
be honest with you. When you go AA, you, you, you go to these, these places of rehab, the first thing you have to do is say, my name is John Mark and I am an alcoholic. Because if you don't admit to you that you are a problem, no program in the world will take you. Tonight I'm praying and I believe your God for strongholds to be broken. Strongholds of stubbornness. Generational st strongholds. Things that our fourth parents did that left a mark on us. Gehazi's seed suffered because of what Gehazi did. His stubbornness affected his seed. Lord, tonight I pray I can't convict nobody, never have, never will. But by your Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, would you bring conviction I believe you tonight, oh God, and I thank you that there is grace tonight to heal the leper. That no matter how far we have gone in sin, no matter how much it has marked us, no matter how much we can sin with, without conviction, you will, just like in, you healed Naaman, you will heal that one tonight, oh God, that you sent this word for. I pray tonight, dear God, that you came to cleanse us from sin. And if anyone here tonight who's not saved, God, that they would run to you, O oh God, to get all their sins washed away. No time for pretending, no time for acting. For Lord, we don't know when our day of judgment is going to come. This is not Hollywood, Lord. This is, this is the house of God. If you're in this house tonight and the Spirit of God is speaking to you, the, the altar is open. Can't the last I have a, I had an altar call. I don't do altar call regular. I don't see unless God tell me. But I believe there's a grace in this house tonight. And I'm not even going to be long either. There is a grace and a window that if God, if, if you're heading down a road one, God says turn around. But if you've been down that road, there's a grace tonight for healing. Gehazi missed the moment because of his pride and his arrogance. He knew better than Elijah. He knew so much it wasn't working for him. If, if the Spirit of God is speaking to your, your heart tonight, you're not coming to me. You don't have to be a member of this church. But you're saying tonight in the presence of God, God, you have spoken a word to me. At a junction tonight, count the cars. I wonder, Gehazi, I thought, I'm going to have to give back the clothes and the silver. You go cars, you something for confess now, you have to give up the relationship. And that's why you're counting right now. You're calculating in your mind, boy, if I, if I come clean, boy, I got to break up this relationship. But let me tell you, I felt the long time I haven't felt the Spirit of God on me like tonight. Come in here, that's new. I knew, beyond a sh I still know. Even if nobody move, I know that God sent this word for somebody tonight. Some Gehazi choosing, destroying your future for a liquor coppers and a liquor dress. Maybe a wedding dress. Maybe you know, kind of something you selling out the will of God for. I believe the grace tonight to heal the leper. But you have to come. You can't stay in your seat. You have to step out publicly. Naaman got healed now because he was obedient. When you step out, it's you and God. God going to heal you. You're going to leave a different man. There's a grace. Break yokes, bandage and addiction, going to leave. God going to give you the grace for walking in freedom. Name was a new man, because he heard a simple word. Go, go, wash your kin, dip seven times. But in the, ob why am I for left my seat? Stay where you are. It's simple now. I, I have better rivers in Syria. I thought to myself, remember last week? I go do it on my terms. And I go home, I go by my bed and I go talk to God. That's not what God tell you to do. 
You go back to Syria and, and dip in the Syria River 700 times, your skin not going to change. The key is in obedience. Lord, I thank you, O oh God, for your, your word tonight. I thank you, Lord, that even though Gehazi was, Elijah was broken hearted, Lord, I believe that you were broken hearted as well. A broken hearted God who loved, O oh God, his children. Watch us walking down a road that leads to our own destruction. It's not God's will to judge us with leprosy, judge us with anything. But he's a holy God. Lord, I pray tonight as your servant, as you send me this word, with this word, not to condemn, but to bring healing. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that something would take place on the inside. Name and obeyed, dipped in that water. These have come tonight and walk these few steps in, in obedience. I pray tonight in the name of Jesus that strongholds be broken. The anointing shatters yokes. God, on the inside tonight, I pray against leprosy and callousness and consequences. I even pray tonight and I curse premature death. That spirit that has sent, Lord, to abort the purpose of your people, I break it over these young men's life. The battle that's raging for their future and their destiny tonight, O oh God. I rebuke every spirit tonight, O oh God, sent to destroy their life in Jesus' name. Lord, every crooked part, would you make it straight tonight in the name of Jesus? Strongholds be broken. Break strongholds, O oh God, every stubbornness. Any and everything that would abort the purpose of God tonight, O oh God. Lord, let, let them feel your love for them, O oh God. Lord, forgive, heal, empower. Do what only you can do tonight, O oh God. Bring, job, bring back feeling. You've been saying, I just don't feel nothing. God, tonight, you heal the leper. Bring back feeling. I pray for this restoration of sight. That you'll see a future beyond the temporary pleasure of sin. That you will see a future in God. Break every temptation tonight. Every stronghold tonight. I pray against impatience tonight in the name of Jesus. Every impatient spirit, every voice that's calling, Lord. I pray against every, every youthful loss, everything that's calling them tonight, O oh God. I pray that they will heed unto your voice in the name of Jesus. For all of our actions come with consequences. Naaman made the right action and he got a great consequence. I stand with them tonight and I pray that every right choice they make, O oh God, would yield the right consequence. I thank you, O oh God, tonight for the foolishness of your word and the foolishness of faith. A wet name and going down in a dirty river. But Lord, you honored his obedience. And for these young men tonight to have stepped forward, Lord, would you honor their obedience? Would you do what you alone can do? Bring joy. Do something special. Let them know, oh God, that there's a reward and a cleansing. Bring joy and feeling and sight and vision and dreams. Pour out your spirit, oh God. Speak to them. I bought every plan of Satan, every counterfeit lie. Break every generational sin, every curse, God, going back to the third and the fourth generation on each and every side. I break it tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall be what you call them to be. Thank you, God, for your grace tonight. Thank you for your love. I pray for this church, Lord, that you talk to them about testing. All of us are going to be tested. From the leader right back, from the pastor to the pulpit, the pew, every one of us is going to be tested. But Lord, in time to come, there's going to be promotion. There's going to be joy. 
for those who, who heeded unto your word, those who, who took it serious, Lord, is going to be rejoicing. In a few weeks when results come back, there's going to be rejoicing and celebration. But Lord, is also going to be weeping and embarrassment and shame. For some masqueraded, had pens in school, pretending everything was okay. It looked like they were coming to school with big Bible in their hand. But when the tests come and they fail, oh God, and the results come out, it's going to be embarrassing and shameful. By your grace, God, give us the strength to pass the test. I thank you for this word you've been speaking unto the church. a very serious word. But Lord, you know why and you know when. And I praise you tonight for your people. How much more you had for, for Gehazi than two pieces of silver and two clothes. Sold himself short. Lord, you have such big, great plans for us. Just the time. Just your timing is perfect. Lord, let your word find root in our heart tonight. And as we go our separate ways, oh God, let us make up our mind, Lord, to submit to you. Let us praise you like me, man. Say, thank you, Lord. I'm going to give you all that I have in light of your mercies towards me. I thank you, God, for your word tonight, for your power, your transforming hand. Praise you tonight, oh God, for what you have said and for what you're going to do. I pray this as we go, Lord, for every broken-hearted minister, of every broken-hearted man of God, investing, pouring, Lord, into a generation to come. But realizing, oh God, that we are not God. We are only your servants. Pour out more of your spirit, Lord. Your anointing, the prophetic mantle, to see the unseen, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. You're the same God yesterday and today. Let faith and favor come alive in your church again. But even, Lord, when those things happen, it's still going to boil right down to will we obey or disobey? Thank you for your grace today to overcome. Bless your people. Change destinies. Heal lepers. Heal Naaman. Do great things. Draw people unto yourself for your name's sake. Help us to represent you well. That's the prayer of my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. And we will lift your hands to heaven. Just lift your hands to heaven and just say, God, thank you. Just say, God, thank you. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your warning. Because God knows. He knows. Let's take a moment and, say, and just tell God, thank you. Thank you. Let's say, God, thank you. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. If you were to count iniquity, who would stand? Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, God. The goodness of God will draw us to repentance. Thank you tonight, O oh God, for your people, for your word, for this night again. Lord, you're not bluffing. You're trying to avert disaster. But I want to say thank you. Thank you for another chance. You could have struck down Gehazi on the road. Go in. You could have struck him down on the road. Come back. You could have struck him down like Ananias and Sapphira when they lied in the church. You could have struck, them, struck him down dead. But God, you gave him another chance. And I thank you for tonight for another chance. And I pray that we will take it serious and hold it to heart with a sense of gratitude, O oh God, for what you have done in this place and in the life of your people. Thank you again and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless somebody before you go. Encourage somebody before you go. Um, and pass the test when they come. I bless you. Amen. Strength. 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 Hallelujah.